Brian Freer, tutoring high school chemistry. Today's topic is molecular geometry. So we've already worked with covalent bonding, and we know that nonmetals can bond together, and sometimes more than one at a time, like carbon tetrafluoride, which is carbon bonded to three, four Fs at the same time, CF4. The interesting thing is that when more than one atom bonds to another atom, what occurs is some sort of molecular geometry. They form into some sort of shape. So when you look at this under a microscope, it doesn't actually look like a carbon in the middle, then a fluorine, then another fluorine, then another one, then another one. That looks like a daisy. No. What actually happens is a tetrahedral shape, which looks kind of like this. This is what happens whenever you've got a central atom, like carbon, and four other atoms around it, hence the four over there. There are a few other ones that you need to know about. When you've got three atoms surrounding the central one, you get a trigonal planar. That's a very simple two-dimensional kind of configuration, just like that. If you've got two atoms around the central one, you get a linear shape. So that covers a lot of different compounds that you can run across. So you might be asking, what are these three for? Well, that involves something called a lone pair. So let me draw out oxygen for you in a Lewis dot diagram. One, two, three, four, five, six. Notice these two pairs of electrons that I drew out. Remember in Lewis dot diagrams, we have to do this sometimes. These are called lone pairs. The, being electrons, they have a certain amount of repulsive force on the other atoms, and they can actually, since they don't bond, take the place of an atom. Let me try and make that a bit more clear with an example, NH3. Nitrogen looks like this. One lone pair and three bonding electrons. And so it bonds to hydrogen kind of with three around it. Now, you might think that this was a trigonal planar, because there are three atoms around a central atom. Actually, this is your trigonal pyramidal. Let me show you how this works. What we actually do is we count this lone pair over here as another atom. So, we actually give this a tetrahedral shape at first. You see, because the lone pair is not actually an atom, what we do is we just erase one leg to count off for the lone pair. And what we're left with is this kind of pyramidal shape, with these three hydrogens being at the ends of the legs and nitrogen up here in the middle. So let me give you another example of something similar, something perhaps a bit more close to at home. As we were working with oxygen earlier, two lone pairs and two bonding electrons, which bond, well, the hydrogens in water. So that looks kind of like this. Notice, two lone pairs. So what we can say is, counting these as atoms, we can say that there are four atoms around the central atom. So we can make that tetrahedral. But this time, there are two lone pairs. So erase two of the legs. What you're left with is a central atom and kind of a bent shaped, which is what we call it, bent, for two atoms around the main central atom and two lone pairs. There's also one other way to get bent, and that's working from the trigonal planar. That one's pretty clear. When you've got a trigonal planar like this, and one lone pair, you just erase one leg. You've got it bent. To recap, when multiple elements bond together covalently, mo molecular geometries can result. If there are four atoms around a central atom, you get a tetrahedral shape. Three atoms, trigonal planar. Two, linear. If you've got three atoms and one lone pair, you get trigonal pyramidal. Two atoms and two lone pairs, bent, and two atoms and one lone pair, also bent. Okay, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Preer. See you next time.